guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods. So before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get exclusive rewards like permanent access to our Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. We all turn to the window. Just before a black can comes flying through the smashed glass, the prince catches it in his paw effortlessly, examining it. Another canister rolls down the stairs. Ooh. Lahina drops the metal tin to the floor, stepping back with a paw reaching inside his jacket, disappearing into the fog. Yep. Ah, uh, the cavalry has arrived. Benny! Oh god. Get your filthy fucking paws away from him! And what is one lonely little bunny going to do to stop me? Oh. Uh, she's not alone. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, she's not alone. I shut my eyes. My one working arm shooting up to cover my ears, I drop to the floor. Acrid smoke replaces the rotting wood in my nose, and I cough. But there's, there's, another, there's another faint smell beneath it. Jasmine. River sits crouched in front of me. She mumbles something, but I can't tell what. Her paw grabs at my shoulder and arm, and I wince. Dislocated. Before she locks my arm in a tight grip, placing her boot against my hip and pulls. I cry out as I feel my entire left side crack, the shockwave echoing through my skull. I look down at my left paw. I can move my fingers again. She pulls something from her pocket, stuffing my ears, just as another shot splinters the wooden wall above us. But this time, my ears don't ring. The smoke slowly dissipates, the table coming back into view. And... The wolf? What? Oh shit. Him. Hey! I push myself off the wall. Tiny, wait! She tries to hold me back, but I shake myself free, pushing past the table. Hey, get back here! They turn, walking down the corridor across the water. So I follow, picking up the pace. And the closer I get, the further away they drift. Almost sprinting, I run after them down the corridor. Hey! Yeesh. Until my movement comes to a sudden halt by a large tuft of white fur, I find myself out of breath on the damp wood. A massive paw grips the front of my hoodie tight, belonging to the colossal figure towering above me. He effortlessly lifts me off the floor, slamming me back down. The wood gives out. I reach up to grasp at his forearm as I hang freely above the rushing water below, legs swinging. But pull me up! My voice is drowned out by the water, but the pale dog looks down at me with a confused expression. Another shot echoes out, and the Goliath flinches back. He slowly turns to look, holding his other arm out, where blood runs freely through his pale fur. Oh. He looks back down the corridor, just, in a, just before another large canine smashes into him, tackling him to the ground and losing his grip on me. I scramble to grab the edge of the broken floor, splintered wood piercing my digits as I hold on for my life. The two canines disappear out of view, snarling as they throw their fists their fists freely. I try to pull myself up, but the pain in my left arm never but the pain in my left arm stops me. Help! I look down at the rushing waters. Maybe I could just let go. Fall. No. No, you fucking dick! This is not the time to be thinking shit like that. Another set of footsteps vibrate through the floor, light ones. Shit! The possum slides to a stop only a meter before the hole, tentatively stepping closer on shaky legs. Ink, pull me up! Shit, uh, shit! He hesitates, rocking back and forth. Fuck! Up, uh, nubby! His paws cup his masked muzzle. You gotta pull me up! My fingers are slipping. Ink's head shoots back and forth between me and the hallway. Second, y'all. Drink time? Jesus. Well, I think we all knew there would be a rescue attempt. Fuck! Something slams against the floor down the hall, followed by rapid steps. The rabbit tosses something into the possum as she kneels in front of the hole. Four! She grabs my forearm with both paws, pulling. My legs swivel as I dig my claws into the rotting wood until I manage to get my, to get my knees onto firm ground. 
Just as quickly, we all scurry up behind the barrels and debris littering the sides of the hallway. You good, Tiny? I don't respond. I duck my head, despite being behind cover. Whew, this shit's fucking wild! A pained howl echoes down the hall from where the two canines disappeared. Ah, shit, giant! Ink lurches forward, same direction as the two canines earlier, tossing the pistol across to us. The gun lands in my lap, slide locked to the back. You know how to use that thing, Striped- You know how to use that thing, Striped Tail? Doc reaches back, pulling a fresh magazine from her pocket, holding it out. I nod. Yeah. Picking the pistol up, I press the magazine release, watching the empty piece of metal fall into my lap. I insert the new one, release the slide, and make sure the safety's off. Doc stuffs the empty one in her jacket, instead pulling out another canister, pressing it to my chest as she peeks over our cover. From ink with love. Eh. She grabs my shoulder, locking eyes at me through the dark lenses. Thirty seconds, all right? Then we're leaving. I nod. Once that's up, you grip this tight and pull its pin. She demonstrates on the metal tin in my paw. And throw it. Got it? Got it. Repeat it. Thirty seconds. Hold it tight. Pull the pin. Throw. She claps my shoulder. Luckily not the one, luck, luckily not the one hurting. Good. I'm getting the others. Don't fuck this up. She sprints down the hall, crouching to stay low. I take a deep breath, crouching behind the barrel. Thirty seconds. I hold the canister tight. Pull the pin. Throw. Then what? Get out? How? Fuck, how many seconds have passed? I shake my head, turning to face the gunfire. I slowly peek above the ledge. A silhouette peeks around the corner. I grunt, feeling the shockwave echo through my left arm. Come on! Arms bent, shoulders down. Line up the sights! Was that a warning shot, little raccoon? What? I've never seen you miss before. But put the gun down and step out! Oh, please, aren't we past the formalities? I'm almost hurt. I don't know you. But I do. Two months you're off the radar, and this is how your encore begins. Come now, we both know you don't shoot to kill. Things, things have changed since last time. Oh, I'm aware. Falk is dead. He deserved it. He, he deserved it. Did he? Yes, I'm sure he did. So do you. And so do you. Lahaina steps out into the hallway, gas mask strapped over his muzzle, lenses dark. Oh, Riot. We both do. I'm fine with that. No, fuck that. Are you truly willing to die just to kill me? No, kill him. Yes. My arms are shaking. Hmm, now that's an interesting turn. I wonder. Arms bent, shoulders down, line up the sights. He lifts his arm, gun and paw, towards me. Will the bloodhound mourn for you? Kill him! Tiny! Shit. The prince hurls down, backing up the table to steady himself. I drop the pistol, fumbling for the canister at my feet. Hold it tight, pull the pin. Throw! The metal tin rolls down the hall, coming to a stop at the hyena's feet. Him out of here any way you can! Footsteps fill the silence behind me. Hope you know how to swim! Before I can turn, someone grabs my head and pulls me back. I choke. And I fall. Oh. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. Alright. Second, y'all. Drink time. Everything is silent and calm and cold. Peaceful. Drifting through nothingness. Weightless. This must be what death is like. I'm so tired. Maybe I could just stay here. Drifting through the void. Just let all my troubles wash away. No worries. No more stress. Just this. Forever. Wish you were here, Tiny. My chest burns with the lack of oxygen, but it'll pass. One breath and all the pain will dissipate, disperse, dilute into the current. One breath, I just have to open my mouth and breathe in. One breath, and I will never have to surface again. You used to be so kind to me. You were supposed to take me away. 
away from everything. Then you changed. You made me believe I deserved it. And you made me thank you. You made me hate you. You made me hate myself. Fucking miss you, man. I'll never forget you, Miles. Will you remember me? If my body comes to rest at the bottom. Stay safe. Be brave. Don't forget me. I gasp for air, clambering onto shore on paws and knees as I'm pulled by my hoodie. So cold. So fucking cold. They set me down against a tree, crouching down in front. She reaches back behind her head, fiddling with the buckle until her mask comes loose. Are you hurt? Her paws run through the fur around my neck, tilting my head to get a closer look. I spend another second or so coughing up water before I'm able to answer. No. Yes. I don't know. I lift my shaking paws, covered in small cuts and splinters. Her paw... Her paw runs across my shoulder, and I immediately suck in air through gritted teeth. She pauses, examining my face. On a scale of one to ten. A six? Maybe seven? Her paws continue to scan me. You'll survive. I'll give you something for it once we're back at, once we're back at base. But where are the others? They'll meet us there. Don't worry. But Lucas, he... River grabs the back of my head, looking deep into my eyes. Cody, look at me. He'll be fine. Mason's with him. I hesitantly nod, leaning, leaning my head back against the bark of the trunk, shivering from the freezing temperature. When her paw reaches my stomach, she suddenly pulls back, wringing her wrist out in the air. What the fuck's in your pocket? I look down, patting the front of my hoodie. Oh. I reach inside and pull out a piece of the mirror from the bar. It's a wonder it stayed put while in the water, that it didn't cut me. Without my permission. River finishes patting me down. She sits back with her legs bent, resting her elbows on her knees and rubbing it, rubbing her eyes. Who were they? I look at her, a bit confused until she tilts her head upstream. My eyes return to the muddy grass. He called himself the Red Prince. I think he was the guy who sent the wolf to George's house yesterday. The one who stabbed Luke. What did he want? Information. Everything that went down at the house, I think. I promised Hanson the meth we took yesterday if he didn't sell me out. But, but then he... I trail off, scream still ringing in my ears. Did I get you killed? Did you die because of me? Second y'all, drink time. Did I kill you? Did you deserve it? Okay, and what were you doing there? I sigh. He found me out here and chased me to the mill. I thought I could hide inside, but, uh... River doesn't answer, instead untangling her arms from the straps of her backpack. How'd you find me out here? She reaches inside, searching through its contents. Who the fuck packed this bag? Until she pulls out a roll of bandages. Figured you must have run out here since you weren't at home base or lose apartment. She tugs at the piece of tape holding it together with her two front teeth, turning her head to spit it to the side. Retracing your steps, right? The place you woke up. I nod. Mason suggested the old town. Something about mentioning it to you and that that's where we started. She tilts her head at my limp arm. Guess that's what made you scream? Before lifting her paw, pointing at her oval ears. You could hear it across the half of the forest. Not sure we would have found you otherwise. I look down at my aching shoulder, just as River loops the stark white bandage around the back of my neck. She lifts my arm to my chest with determination, fashioning a makeshift sling. All the while, involuntary groans of pain escape my muzzle. Why, uh, why'd you... I trail off. She glances up at me for a second, before returning her eyes to her work. I mean, I didn't think you did this sort of stuff. Especially not for me. Don't get used to it. She sighs. Luke cares about you. They both do. They wouldn't want to see you dead. I'm not sure I believe that. Pretty sure a lot of things would be better if I was. Thank you. She shakes her head, waving it off as her digits fiddle with the roll of gauze. You care you care about him a lot, don't you? Lou, I mean. She stops, her expression changing as she blankly looks down at my arm. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.